The Lord be with you. And also with you. I welcome all of you old friends and new friends who are joining us for worship today with the community of Northminster Presbyterian Church. Um, we are grateful that you all are here with us from wherever you may be. You've noticed Kevin Brown is joining us for worship this morning. And if you are interested in being a virtual liturgist in a future Sunday, uh, let me know and I'll be glad to talk you through what's involved in helping lead worship with us in this way. We also are talking about some plans down the road in a, um, in a few weeks, maybe for a virtual fellowship time, as our time of fellowship has been a meaningful one for us when we can be together as a community at the church. So we are exploring ways that we can do that together, uh, maybe by Zoom in an upcoming week. So more to come on that. We do have just a couple of our announcements about regular weekly events. We have our Monday lectionary Bible study by Zoom that meets at 1230 tomorrow. And we have our Wednesday evening Lectio Divina and prayer group that meets at six o'clock. And I will be emailing out the links to be able to join those for those that are interested. And I will be continuing to keep everyone updated by email as I know of ongoing ways that we can help with disaster relief after the tornadoes in our community last week, as well as opportunities to continue helping with the snack packs that we've been preparing to get to some of our communities in need uh, especially for our students while they are out of school to help provide some extra meals in communities that need those. And I am grateful for everybody who's been able to help with that so far. Um, so now let us turn our hearts and our minds to the worship of God. Creator of the cosmos, of eternity and time. Be with us in this time. Savior of the world, healer of the nations. Be with us in this place. Breath of all that lives, of people near and far. Stir within our lives. Maker, Spirit, Son, God of here and now. Be present in our worship, that we may find new ways to be present in your world. Let us worship God. Be not afraid, sing out for joy, Christ is risen, hallelujah. Be not afraid, sing out for joy, Christ is risen, hallelujah. Be not afraid, sing out for joy, Christ is risen, Like those disciples long ago, we are filled with uncertainty, wondering what next piece of news we will hear and what it will bring, what awaits us today, tonight, or tomorrow. So let us confess how hard it is to believe in the resurrection life and hope that is offered to us by the one who offers us peace and healing as we pray our prayer of confession. Holy One, we confess that it has often been too much. There is too much loss, too much fear, too much grief, too much despair. There's only so much we can handle and it is overwhelming us. Help us, O oh God, to let go of the fear that holds us in its grip and instead cling to hope. Help us, O oh God, to acknowledge our doubts and yet to trust in you, to know that you are with us and we are not alone. Help us, O oh God, to have faith that this too shall come to pass. Guide us in this time of uncertainty to focus on you, our rock and our redeemer. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. Christ is the one who died on the cross, but also laid in the tomb of death for three days. Christ knows our fears, what it is like to feel trapped, what it is like to live without hope. And yet Christ rose and, will, and we will rise. Christ lives and we live now and forever. Christ loves us and calls us to love one another. 
live into this hope by loving one another and trusting that Christ is with us through all things and will see us through. Amen. Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you. I do not give to you as the world gives, so do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. So now, as loved and forgiven people, let us share God's grace and Christ's peace with one another. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Halle, halle, halle. And now I would like to invite anybody who would like to hear a story from our children's Bible to listen in if you weren't already for the time for the child in us all. I have a story as we celebrated Easter last week and talked about the story of, of Jesus's resurrection. There are also stories in our Bible about Jesus appearing again to his friends so that they could see him and know that he was alive. And so I want to share one of those stories today about Jesus and one of his friends, Thomas. Have you ever wondered if something you were told is true? Asking questions helps you find answers. Asking questions about Jesus and Bible stories helps you to be a better follower of Jesus. So listen for Thomas's question. On the same day that the women found the empty tomb, Jesus surprised the disciples. They, except for Thomas, were in a room with the door locked. They were afraid that the people who had killed Jesus would look for them. Suddenly Jesus was in the room with them, but no one had unlocked the door. Peace be with you, said Jesus. Before he left, he showed them the scars on his hands and in his side. The disciples were joyful and happy. When Thomas came back, they all talked at once. Jesus is back, we've seen him up close. But Thomas wasn't so sure they were telling the truth. I'm not sure that I believe what you say. I'll believe you when I see Jesus in person myself. I want to see him with my own eyes. Eight days later, the disciples were gathered together in the same room. This time Thomas was there too. Suddenly Jesus was in the room, even though the door was locked. Jesus blessed them saying, peace be with you. Jesus said to Thomas, put your hands on my hands. See the marks where the soldiers hurt me. Here I am, scars and all. Believe that I am alive. Amazed, Thomas touched Jesus' scars. He said, my Lord Jesus, it is you. Thomas, Jesus said, do you believe it is me because you can see me? Blessed are people who don't see me and still believe that I love them. After that day, Jesus did many wonderful things. He showed everyone God's love for the world. Some people wrote down what they remembered about Jesus and his stories. And because they did, we can learn more about him, even though we can't see him. But thank you for joining me for this story as we remember the ways that Jesus continues to show us how much God loves us. Let us pray. As we come to your word this day, O oh God, make peace in our hearts so that we may truly hear you and follow you, for it is in serving you that we find life abundant. Amen. The scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Acts. It is from the first chapter, the first 14 verses. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over the course of 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. 
While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. While he said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. So as you may remember from last week, if you were worshiping with us, Mark's gospel ended with an empty tomb and silence and fear. But Luke's account of the Acts of the Apostles here that Kevin read alludes to the stories of Jesus reappearing to the disciples a number of times after his resurrection. Stories like the one with Thomas that I read from the children's Bible. And just as the disciples were adjusting to the presence of the risen Christ in their midst, here we are with the story of Jesus's ascension. Luke begins the book of Acts here with this event that takes place 40 days after the resurrection. It was the other part of the story that Jesus had told them, yet possibly another part they had not understood or perhaps ignored or just didn't want to believe. Jesus said that he was not always going to be with them, but he promised that they and we would not be left alone. This ascension story marks a pivotal moment between Jesus's post-resurrection appearances and the gifting of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost that we will come back to in a few weeks. And this is this dramatic story of Jesus ascending into the clouds. And in this story, it creates this in-between time that surely caused some anxiety. Jesus leaves the disciples. And it must have felt like they were, that he was leaving them a second time. And here, as Jesus prepares to ascend, he doesn't want them to dwell on goodbyes. They have work to do. Jesus says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. But until this will happen, Jesus tells them to wait in Jerusalem until the Spirit comes to commission them. Really? Just stay there? Hold up in the upper room in Jerusalem and wait? That doesn't seem very productive, Jesus. After everything they have been through, traveling with Jesus as he was teaching and healing and feeding, seeing him arrested and crucified, being shocked by the women's account of the empty tomb and seeing the risen Christ in their midst, with what Luke here calls many convincing proofs, Jesus says to wait. I wonder if the disciples were a little uncomfortable with that direction. But maybe after everything they had been through, 
traveling with Jesus as he was healing and feeding and teaching and seeing him arrested and crucified and being shocked by the women's account of the empty tomb and seeing the risen Christ in their midst and preparing to see him ascend into the clouds and then be commissioned to continue his work here on earth. Maybe Jesus knew that waiting was exactly what they needed right now. Maybe this instruction to wait was a gift to them, a chance to process what they had experienced, to reconnect with one another, to grieve, to give thanks, to rest. And Jesus doesn't really give them a timeline for this, which makes the waiting so much harder. As we are finding in our lives now, waiting is hard enough, but it can feel so much harder when we don't know how long we will have to wait, and we don't know exactly what we are waiting for. We've seen where people's anxieties about waiting are leading to premature calls to reopen everything and return to normal against the advice of all the experts. And what we will return to when we can safely do so will not be the same normal that we knew before. The disciples were not going to return to life as normal after this either. Their lives weren't ever going to look like they did before they met Jesus or even during their time as his followers. They were going to become not just his disciples, but now his apostles, his witnesses, sharing the message of his gospel to a world who never knew Jesus in person. Things are not and cannot be the same. So Jesus tells them first to wait. Use this time to remember and share and pay attention to what matters. When Jesus does ascend in this story, I love the image of the disciples looking up to heaven here. And I imagine them a little bit dumbfounded by the experience. And, and then these two men in white robes are there, possibly they're angels, we don't know. But they seem to shake the disciples out of their frozen gaze up to the heavens with their question. Why do you stand looking up toward heaven? It's as if they are saying, why are you still looking up there? Didn't you listen to what Jesus just told you? You have things to do down here. Pay attention to that. So what looks like the end of that story is simply the beginning of a new chapter. A chapter in which the disciples of Jesus have a lot more work to do. And we continue to participate in this part of the story today. Because we cannot spend our lives of discipleship simply replaying the stories of the work that Jesus did and stopping there. We are called to continue the story, even as we wait in the midst of so much uncertainty. Jesus has left us here for the good of the world to feed the hungry, tend to the sick, to continue distancing precautions to keep others safe, to offer healing and hope to the hurting, to clean up the broken pieces of people's lives and homes after a storm, to give of our resources to help others, to amplify those voices that have been silenced, to seek peace, to keep up the work Jesus began during his time on earth. And the good news is we are not alone in this. God is with us to help us not merely persevere, but also to flourish. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we continue the story. Amen. Wherever you are, let us join together in this affirmation of faith as the words appear on the screen. This is from the Iona community. We believe that God is present in the darkness before dawn, in the waiting and uncertainty where fear and courage join hands, conflict and caring link arms, and the sun rises over barbed wire. We believe in a with us God who sits down in our midst to share our humanity. 
we affirm a faith that takes us beyond the safe place into action, into vulnerability, and into the streets. We commit ourselves to work for change and put ourselves on the line, to bear responsibility, take risks, live powerfully, and face humili humiliation, to stand with those on the edge, to choose life and be used by the Spirit for God's new community of hope. Amen. Amen. And now in a moment, as uh, there's a time of musical reflection, you're invited to share any prayer requests that you may have, either by sending them to me by text or email, or you can post them in the comments there if you're watching on Facebook Live. Um, and so as we listen to this music, um, let's gather our prayers together as a community. So um, now as we gather together some of our prayers, I will share some of the ones that have been offered to me. Um, first one that I know is on uh, many of our hearts as we pray for all of the tornado victims in our region and all who've been impacted by the storms, however big or small that may be. And um, I was even thinking this morning for those, as the rain came down a little bit this morning for anybody for whom extra rain is, is an added stress. Um, so we pray for all of those who are seeking to continue to clean up and rebuild and wait for power to be restored. Um, and certainly for those families who have loved ones who have been injured or killed, um, we keep them in our prayers. Also, um, a prayer uh, Keith and Sheena had shared last week about a colleague of theirs, Kevin Malloy, who was in the hospital um, with COVID-19, and they said that he died this past week. And They've asked for prayers for, for the whole community, but um, especially for his wife, Rona, and their daughter, Amanda. And then Hamp and Clarice have asked for prayers for two friends of theirs, uh, Dr. Jim Buckingham and Joe Burnett. And we also wanna pray for Alice and Gary Gilreath and their family upon the death of Gary's father yesterday in Knoxville. Um, and they are not sure yet when they will be able to do a service, but we, um, we do want to keep them in our prayers. And Katie Powers has shared that her grandmother is under the care of hospice in Wisconsin right now, and um, which raises a concern that so many have found that um, the challenge of trying to be with, or when you can't be with loved ones who are sick or dying, um, and for, to pray for those who are able to be present with them and care for them. And I also had a, a message from Anna Gibbons um, that she said I could share that she was admitted to the hospital this past Thursday after um, collapsing. And so they have determined that she has a nodule on her thyroid that they think is benign but could be causing some, uh, some issues that have been problematic for her. Um, and so she's asked for prayer specifically because it is near her vocal cords. And um, so hoping that her ability to sing and continue to play violin will not be compromised. 
and that insurance will cover these costs as she's in the hospital. Um, and then um, her own concern, as we do for any loved ones who are in the medical system right now, that she would be protected from acquiring the virus um, as others who may be in the hospital have it. So that can add extra stress. Um, but she and others have offered prayers of praise and thanksgiving for all of our doctors and nurses and all of the essential workers who are helping to care for us in so many ways. We've got a few uh, prayers that have been listed on the, the Facebooks. Uh, Mariko has asked for prayers for all the parents that are continuing to care for little ones at home, um, both during this time of quarantine, but especially dealing with the fresh trauma of the tornado. Uh, Lucy Harden, Laura's mother, has uh, asked to keep Kenny Guggenheim in your prayers as he recently lost his twin brother. Courtney Brown has asked uh, prayers for those in paths of the storms that are coming through today. Um, I think doubly for, for anyone that was impacted this last week and then having to uh, feel that sense of all the uh, storms again. And Anna Gibbons, uh, prayers for the emergency and the EPB workers during the storms and all of the associated cleanup. Well, you all are always welcome to continue sharing prayer requests that may arise within those comments as that community um, that is worshiping together in that way can, can share your prayers. Um, so holding on to those prayers that we have named and those prayers that go unspoken, um, let us pray. Holy and ever-present God, at the breaking of this day, we offer our thanksgiving for all of who you are and for all the signs of life. Musical bird song and blooming flowers outside, perhaps a snoring dog and children giggling. Even tired and crabby families that gather at the table with Cheerios and toast. Life in all of its ordinary is beyond blessing. We offer prayers today in the midst of our strange new versions of ordinary for all the suffering in our world, for neighbors who are recovering from storms and tornadoes, for those who are hungry, for those who are anxious and isolated, for those who are afraid, for those who are sick and dying. We pray for those whose homes are unsafe and for our earth home, ravaged by disrespect and disregard. And now, oh God, we offer to you the cares and concerns and laments of our hearts shared in the silence of community. Gather us up to your heart, O God. Help us to sing one another's songs together. We know you will bear our burdens as we share them. Lighten our loads so we are freed to carry your gospel into the ordinary of our days, to be your light and justice and love. We pray in the name of Christ, our brother, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now with gratitude to God, I invite you into a time of offering um, as you reflect on the ways in which you can share from what you have um, with, with Thanksgiving. And so whether that be making a commitment to, to volunteer in a way that you can do so safely, to donate to those in need, to contribute to the ministry and mission of our church. If there are ways that you want to reach out to write a note or extend a phone call to share a moment of, 
of love and greeting to someone who you have been thinking about today. Whatever you are able to do, do so with gratitude to God as we share our offerings at this time. My life flows on in endless song above earth's lamentation. I hear the clear though far off hymn that hails a new creation. <clears throat> no storm can shake my inmost calm. While to that rock I'm clinging, since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? Through all the tumult and the strife, I hear that music ringing. It finds an echo in my soul. How can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost calm while to that rock I'm clinging. Since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? The peace of Christ makes fresh my heart, a fountain ever springing. All things are mine since I am his. How can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost calm While to that rock I'm clinging Since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth How can I keep from singing? And now that our service has ended, this is when our service truly begins. We are called to continue the story. Pay attention to what matters. Love your neighbor. And know that we do not do this work alone. And may the grace of our risen Lord be with you. The boundless love of God surround you. And the community of the Holy Spirit be with you until we can meet again. Amen.
My life flows on in endless song above us lamentation. I hear the clear though far off him that hails on new creation. <clears throat> no storm can shake my inmost calm. While to that rock I'm clinging, since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? Through all the tumult and the strife, I hear that music ringing. It finds an echo in my soul. How can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost calm. While to that rock I'm clinging. Since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth. How can I keep from singing? The peace of Christ makes fresh my heart, a fountain ever springing. All things are mine since I am his. How can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost calm While to that rock I'm clinging Since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth How can I keep from singing?